Hello everyone, thanks again for joining me today. We're gonna to talk about electrical outlets and when you go to buy one, how to decide which one to buy. They're not all the same and I know that, you know what I used to do when I was younger and was just go to the local home improvement store, Lowe's, Home Depot or whatever we had back then and just buy whatever was the cheapest without having any idea what this was for and is it for the right application. So I'm going to take you over to the workbench. I'm going to show you a lot of different types of electrical outlets and, and how you can discern the difference between them and when you'd use them. Well, we're here at the workbench and we've got a lot of different uh, types of outlets here. And um, the, the most important thing you can do before you go out to buy an outlet at the store is you need to see which breaker in your breaker panel that uh, outlet is going to be connected to okay and find out whether that is a 15 or a 20 amp breaker because you really want to size your your electrical outlet to the breaker and also to the type of uh, power you're going to draw through that outlet so for example you're just going to plug in you know, your laptop for the most part or you're going to be plugging in a hair dryer or a space heater that will draw more power. And knowing that is important too because you do not want to plug an item into an outlet that draws a lot of power but is only a 15 amp outlet. Let's just pause while the uh, fire trucks pass by. Okay. <laughs> Well, that was an interesting distraction. It's July, and we had Santa on the fire truck. All right, had no idea they were doing that today. So this outlet, I'm not sure if you can see it here with the glare, but this one here says 15A for 15 amp, okay? And then you have uh, other ones here with these boxes. These are all 20 amp, but I'm gonna get into the other things that, the other thing that makes these special but these are going to be 15 amp, 20 amp for the most part. For the, fi the 15 amp, again, you're going to size it to your breaker. And this would be for, uh, for things that, uh, that don't draw a lot of power. And here you have a tamper resistant uh, 15 amp. And so I'm not sure if you can see it, but inside there, you can see the white. It looks like it's blocked and you cannot plug. So you cannot just push anything in into it. It's going to keep it's going to keep it safe for children, for example, that might be putting things into outlets. You know, um, Mrs. Flannel guy says that I was raised by wolves because when I was younger, uh, my mother wasn't paying attention and I was putting the house keys into the uh, electrical outlet and, you know, shocked myself. So uh, this kind of outlet would have prevented that from happening. Anyway, so if you notice, when you take a plug and you, if you put equal pressure on both of these panels inside that are blocking, if you put equal pressure, it'll then allow, it'll open the doors so your plug could, come, could go in. So that's the only way you can put anything in there is if you put equal pressure. If I can get this out now, okay. All right, so this is what a tamper-resistant outlet would look like. You need to check with your local code too because if you're replacing outlets, they might require you to re replace them with tamper resistant. If you are selling your home, it is possible that the home inspector that the buyer hires might be recommending that you convert to tamper resistant. So just keep that in mind. Okay, and this here is a 20 amp breaker, excuse me, uh, outlet, not breaker. And this is also tamper resistant. Same thing. And we're still hearing the fire trucks. I guess they're anticipating I'm going to be wiring outlets today and they're going to be waiting outside. Um, and this one is a 20 amp heavy duty outlet. I'm going to do a full video on the differences between heavy duty and, um, and a regular outlet. <clears throat> but you've got <clears throat> your ground in the back here that, and it also offers a lot more support just the connections here look at the difference between the two look at the size of the screws 
and how much meat you have to uh, to attach the wire to and inside the components are much stronger and uh, like I said I'm gonna do a full video on opening one of these up so you can see what it looks like inside I'll be posting that at some point in the near future okay now your next thing here is your uh, GFCI outlet this type of outlet will help to um, uh, prevent shocks and also will prevent overload if you're plugging something in that's drawing too much power and these also come in 15 and 20 amp this one says WR here which means it's also water resistant if you wanted to use this outside at an outdoor outlet um, and I'm gonna do another video soon which I'll I'll link to up in here in the corner that'll show you uh, how to install these and what the methodology is for installing one of these um, GFCI outlets because a lot of people just install them in in sometimes the wrong places along the circuit and I want to talk about that too finally we have here what's called an a CO ALR which is basically a um, a uh, copper to aluminum um, outlet okay and if you notice inside here inside the package I really don't want to open it because I'm gonna be returning it I'm not using it is look at the color of the screws okay and these things are coded to be able to accept aluminum wire aluminum wiring uh, the one of the main issues with aluminum wiring is you have a couple of things one when you when the when you get the heat build up the uh, aluminum wire will expand and contract much more than uh, copper wire will and when that happens it loosens itself it loosens the connection the other thing is is it can oxidize when you're if it was uh, touching let's say a a uh, a uh, brass or a uh, a copper connection it can oxidize and that oxidation creates a gap between and of through the electrical current and it builds up heat and that heat buildup often will cause a fire it'll either melt the the wire nuts or it could even melt the outlet I've seen that happen and I've had aluminum wiring in my house and I've had that situation happen and I have again another video that talks about how to uh, deal with aluminum wiring and making secure connections and if I can I'll link to that one up in this corner as well now let's hope that you have just the basic knowledge needed to go out and buy a replacement electrical outlet for your house. We're going to uh, show you a video on how to actually wire it properly. Uh, there are a lot of mistakes that are made by uh, novices that haven't, uh, haven't been trained in how to properly wire an electrical outlet. There's a lot of mistakes you can make that could be dangerous for you. So we're going to go through a whole video on that. If you have any questions about electrical outlets and what to buy, just leave it down below in the comments section. I will respond pretty quickly. Appreciate you watching. Hope you have a great day.